We're hitting part of the hospital that you haven't seen before. Today, we're in the Burns Aftercare Clinic. On Operation Ouch, we've seen our fair share of burns, scrapes, cuts and all sorts of gory bits. But what happens afterwards? All those injuries start to heal and often they form scars on your skin. Look at this. Last week, I accidentally burnt my arm on the cooker. Now, your body's really good at repairing itself and this has already started to heal. But if it had been a more serious burn, that could leave a scar and that would require careful treatment. When you injure yourself, the body heals the wound with scar tissue. This looks and feels quite different to normal skin. It's not as strong or flexible, and the bigger and deeper the injury, the bigger the scar. I'm on duty with scar and burn specialist Kevin Ryan to check up on some of the patients he's treating. First in is Holly, who took a bit of a tumble five months ago. If you're squeamish, get ready to look away. So, Holly, what happened? Why are you here? There was a tree stump on a hill and I fell over it. So can I see what happened? That's one month later and the skin's already starting to heal but there's a lot of this pus and infection there. And then this is now five months later and you can see it's all healed and there's a bit of scar but that's going to keep getting better and better, isn't it? Holly is being fitted with a special stocking that will help the scar continue to improve. Because Holly's wound took a long time to heal, the scar is more severe, if you like. Yes. And so by, by making a little stocking that presses on that, it'll get a flatter, nicer result. Is yeah, that right? That's what we're hoping for. Next in is Jensen, having a checkup on a burn he got over four weeks ago. Jensen, can you tell us the story of how this happened? The pie dropped on my leg. You dropped a pie on your leg? <laughs> what type of pie was it? Cheese and onion. Cheese and onion pie? What would have concerned us would it be had he had any raised lumpy scarring that would have contracted and pulled in, but it isn't. That's beautifully soft, nice and soft and supple, so that shouldn't cause him any problems at all. In terms of the pinkness, that would be there for several weeks, if not several months, but it will fade eventually. So if I press on it, yeah. I can make the pinkness go away yes. and then that, that's the blood flowing back. Exactly. But those blood vessels aren't quite normal, are they? That's no, part of not. the healing that's process. That's right, it is. They're very fragile at the moment, they are. But they do, they do improve, it just takes time, it just takes several months for that to resolve. Ben had an accident five months ago. Stand by, because this isn't for the faint-hearted. And unfortunately, his burn injury got infected. To help it heal fully, the doctors took a patch of skin from his thigh to cover the injured part of his foot. This is called a skin graft. So what happened? Why are you in Burns Clinic today? I was making mum and dad a coffee. I had um, a music player with me that I carried downstairs and put on the side while I was waiting for the kettle to boil. And because I had no pockets, I, I just thought of a quick way to, to carry it upstairs and I just put it under my chin. How were you holding it all? I was holding it like that. And then what happened? So I was, like, looking down and I just waited to lift my head up to see where I was going. So you dropped the music player and spilled hot coffee all over your foot? Yeah. Oh, dear. But for Ben, the question now is whether he can go swimming again. Should we Let's have a look at that? Yeah. And we'll give you your answer? Yeah. Fantastic. That's great. Oh. That's beautifully soft. I can't feel any signs of thickening there. That's just what we want. Um, it's now fully healed. I thought this was going to look much more serious. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? That's yeah. such a good result. In terms of swimming, I think yes, no problem. Brilliant. That's brilliant news, brilliant news. Although the scars may not ever go away fully, thanks to these treatments, it means that life can get back to normal for these three. Swimming for Ben, gymnastics for Holly, and cold pies only for Jensen. Doing exercise like this is a great way of strengthening your muscles and your bones. But there are some extraordinary athletes who've become phenomenally strong without lifting any weights at all. They just use their own bodies. This is Calisthenics World Champion Simone. To be this strong, Simone practices calisthenic exercises just like these for four hours a day, six days a week. So you're getting strong without lifting heavy weights, is that right? Yes. It's using your own body weight to do exercise, like pull-ups and push-ups, dips, squats, anything that moves your own body. You can do calisthenics too, if there are classes near where you live. Okay, it's pointy toes. Just like this bendy lot. Calisthenics helps me do other things that other kids can't do. I enjoy calisthenics because it helps me get fitter and stronger and stronger. 
Hey. I'm impressed. All right, Chris, your turn. Let's see what you've got. I'm pretty fit, pretty strong. What, what's some basic calisthenics that I could, I could get into? I want you to try and do a push-up with a clap. Push-up with a little clap. OK. Shouldn't be too hard. Off you go, Chris. Uh, well, there we go. I think, uh, I think I met that challenge pretty easily. Pretty easily? You only managed to do two, Chris. Now I want you to do a dynamic push-up okay. with a clap behind your back. With a clap behind my back? Well, good luck, Chris. Okay, here we go. Ready? <laughs> that was rubbish. I think I found my press up limit. But hold on, now look. Simone, joking aside, that is impossible. No one could do that. Oh, no, it's definitely possible. <laughs> now that is brilliant. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> when you're doing a dynamic push up like that, what muscles are you using? So you're using your chest muscles, mm -hmm. your triceps, mm -hmm. your front of your delts, your core muscles, and also a bit on your back. Simone is using a huge number of muscle groups, but I have a cool way of showing you what's happening inside her body. This is an electromyography sensor, and it's able to detect when a muscle contracts. I'm placing the sensors on Simone's biggest muscle groups. Her deltoids, her triceps, her abs, her quads, and her glutes. The sensors are connected to an electromyography machine, or EMG. This clever kit will record which muscles are being activated when Simone moves. Let's play electromyographic calisthenics conundrums, or we'll guess that muscle for short. Simone is doing an exercise called the air walk. Can you guess which of her muscle groups she's using? Is it her deltoids? Her triceps, her abdominal muscles, her quadriceps, or her glutes. Let's see that exercise again. So, did you guess? Well, actually, she was using all of them. Simone's strength and agility is so great that at times it seems almost like she's defying gravity. But in fact, of course, it's the result of years of dedication and training. That is one brilliant body. 